Chetlana uh, mentioned that this is one of our flagship program that we started uh, um, in 2013. But I also want to talk about some very important crises that we are all facing. This is the climate emergency and also, of course, the current COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, sort of uh, still, uh, in spite of all those crises, I want to uh, send a message of hope and an appeal for our uh, mobilization uh, for uh, sort of uh, um, a, a, a more um, substantial and, and un united uh, action for the safeguard of cultural heritage. Very quickly, I think you have all heard about Europa Nostra, but we are born in 63. We have a network of more than 15 countries. We have a headquarter in The Hague, where I'm speaking now, and we have an increasingly important office in Brussels. Uh, we are a pan-European federation of heritage organizations, associations, foundations, so non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, but we also are happy to have, uh, in addition to 250 member organizations, about 100 uh, regions, cities, uh, organizations that support uh, our work and individuals that, that are part of that network. Because we are talking about the importance of networking, that's what we have been doing all our life in, in, a, in a sense. And, and we cover uh, Europe, of course, but and not just the Europe of the European Union, but the big Europe, Europe of the Council of Europe, and, and a number of, of course, uh, partners and members from outside uh, of Europe. Um, in Croatia, we are particularly uh, well connected and uh, we have a very a proud of a partnership with uh, the city of Dubrovnik and the Best in Heritage event. I hope that many of you have heard of that event and I recommend you also. It's an annual fantastic event of uh, best practices, uh, uh, excellence in heritage organized uh, in Croatia. And we have a number of other uh, contacts. I just wanted to sort of uh, uh, to to especially for the Croatian uh, members and participants of this uh, conference to, um, to point out this, uh, this uh, important uh, moment. Civil society. Uh, there is no, I think in today's world, uh, no action can be done without the proper involvement of civil society. Of course, institutions, governmental at all levels are important, but um, when we come to uh, protection of heritage in times of crisis, the citizens, their communities who are on the ground, who are close to the heritage, are playing an, an extremely important role. When, it, when we speak about the solidarity network, that's all about using the power of a civil society to bring people together. You all know that also in the FARO convention that has been adopted in 2005, uh, uh, everything is uh, so much emphasis in put on the societal value of cultural heritage. It's important for the society and the vital responsibility, not just of experts, but also of citizens and their uh, communities. And um, that's why uh, we, we we, we believe that the cultural heritage uh, in cultural heritage in danger Asian civil society has also to play a role of a proactive stakeholder but very much as a watchdog and and helping the institution to understand better the um, uh, the risks that heritage is facing Heritage at risk has been at the heart, uh, the core of our action uh, from the very beginning of our existence. Uh, and um, whenever there is a, a, a disaster happening, as I said, natural of uh, man-made, we would raise our voice in solidarity. Now, this is uh, uh, just uh, uh, an example when Croatia was um, uh, was struck last year twice by uh, first in March in the middle of the uh, first lockdown of the pandemic, and then in December by the earthquake. At least the voice, the voice of solidarity of Europa Nostra, uh, to embracing sort of our colleagues and friends in 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 Croatia was something that we could offer, and offering also. Our our network to Croatian authorities and citizens uh, in, in the very arduous task of, uh, of saving, uh, of, of restoring the damage, and we know how big damage to cultural heritage, in addition to, um, to a sort of life, society, and economy in general was made. So there are ad hoc uh, necessity for raising our voice. Um, now, uh, I'm sure that the images of, of, of the earthquake uh, in Croatia, you have seen it several times 
times during this conference. Um, but uh, there are other ways, unfortunately, um, being a Belgrade born uh, person uh, feel in the region, uh, in, in the wider region. Um, I just want to uh, share with you another example. Uh, alas, alas, uh, even in, in, in times of peace and without an earthquake, a natural disaster, there can be some pol policy decision uh, that can very much threaten very important heritage. So this is an example in my, my um, city of origin, Belgrade, Belgrade Fortress, one of the most important uh, heritage sites in Serbia, but uh, also uh, in Europe, uh, on the tentative list of UNESCO, the government comes with a fantastic idea to build a cable car somewhere where the law doesn't allow a cable car. And when it's obvious that building a cable car uh, would um, uh, have an um, enormous damage on the authenticity and, um, um, and, and um, um, integrity of, of this, of this uh, site, which is on the tentative list for UNESCO. So uh, there again, um, experts and civil society uh, organizations have uh, gathered together to oppose this project. And Europa Nostra believe that we, our voice and our network uh, is something that can be offered as uh, in solidarity, in support. And I can tell you that um, uh, that, that support that Europa Nostra and the Euro Europe as a whole has given is um, rising hope that the voice of experts and civil society at the end will um, sort of stop this uh, highly damaging project. Um, but let me just mention a few other examples of what type of threats and risk. And I, I've just token, taken examples from the wider region, from inside of the country that I come from. And I come uh, with a country which doesn't exist anymore, but it is the, all the countries of former Yugoslavia. So I just want to, um, uh, to, to mention that another example of a museum, an extraordinary museum, the National Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina, because of all sorts of political um, uh, reasons, uh, um, the, because the politicians couldn't uh, deci decide who is going to fund that museum. Um, the employees of this museum, believe it or not, for three years did not get a salary. But these people, even if they didn't get a salary, they were so committed to protecting that museum uh, that they continued going to uh, work for three years without a salary. And then the civil society came into action to uh, support and to sort of amplify their fight and to amplify and to give more visibility to their fight. And that's how Europa Nostra then came in our way to support them is to give them an award. They got a Grand Prix of the European Union and, and, and Europa Nostra as a heroes, the employees and activists who finally got the museum to be reopened. And now they're doing everything to get more partners to help them to um, revitalize the museum, which has an extremely important collection in all, in, in, in all fields, and it's important for Europe as a whole. Um, another example, uh, again, an unsuitable, um, I mean, not an unsuitable, this is an, a suitable and important infrastructure work, the metro, um, uh, metro line that is built in Thessaloniki. Uh, so we can't say that it is an unresponsible project. But when you build the metro in a city, which is one of the greatest uh, ancient cities in Europe, of course, here and there, you're going to find some very valuable antiquities. And that is what happened uh, in Thessaloniki, the Venizelos metro station, there's extremely important antiquities that we found. And so the civil society and experts are now uh, sort of uh, working, not working, campaigning very strongly and Europa Nostra is supporting their campaign in order to preserve these antiquities in situ and not to just um, sort of relocate them in another location because then their authenticity and integrity will be um, uh, sort of um, definitely uh, damaged and, 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 and their value will be diminished. So all these to, sort of in, in the, in the, in the um, sort of surrounding neighborhood of Croatia, all sorts of examples and how heritage can be endangered and how much it is necessary that we have that network of civil society um, uh, that, is, that is working 
working together to, um, to, to sort of raise awareness of these threats and hopefully to save the places. Very briefly, seven most endangered uh, program launched in partnership with the European Investment Bank Institute in 2013. This uh, and so important, uh, uh, this partnership with the European Investment Bank. And Guy Klaus, who is our executive vice president, who is with us, he has been the one, the architect of that partnership at a time when he was working for the European Investment Bank. Ever since, so we got the bank to think also in terms of uh, the importance of, of cultural heritage. So it was launched, the first list was launched in 2013 and um, uh, first it was every uh, two years and uh, now we are every year publishing a list of seven most endangered. Um, uh, this is the list, These are, this is just the images uh, of the sites that were uh, on our list uh, last year and uh, uh, we will now on the 8th of April we will announce the um, uh, so again, some examples in the region. We will announce on the 8th of April the new list, the 2021. Um, again, uh, I don't have the time to go. I have here. I think you, we can share this publication, uh, this this presentation, so you can um, you can see some some other examples. But some uh, sites. This is archaeological site in uh, northern uh, Macedonia um, uh, that was shortlisted on on our list in 2014. Um, we have, uh, let me see what's going on. In Albania, Roman amphitheater in Durish, in the heart of the uh, city. So it's very difficult to uh, surround it by, by unsuitable, all sorts of uh, sort of urban development. Uh, how to save such an important uh, Roman amphitheater in Durish? It has been on the list, and the listing has definitely contributing to bringing uh, a higher visibility to the endangered side. And in many, many cases, including in this one, it has helped to finding a way, bringing all sorts of partners together in order to um, uh, to find find the solution to uh, to um, uh, go in to sort of um, have a rehabilitation of these sites. Unfortunately, I said in many cases we have a success. This is an example last year. That's the first site, in fact, that was demolished, not uh, at the moment where it was listed by Europa Nostra as one of the seven most endangered sites, and that is the National Theatre of Albania. This is really one of the very painful examples then, in spite of solidarity, in spite of mobilization of civil society, you have the government that goes uh, against and just send the bulldozers and uh, demolish in the middle of the pandemic this, this site. So it's still very interesting what's going to be the next step, whether indeed um, this is going to remain an empty place or replaced by uh, uh, other uh, buildings or whether, uh, thanks to the civil society, they will insist that the theater is built, uh, rebuilt on the same place. That is, it, it, it has become extremely important issue for the civil society uh, uh, in Albania. Uh, another example, which is an example from Serbia, that is a, a positive example. It is the Subotica synagogue, uh, which was for many, many years in danger. But thanks to the listing, not only on our list, but also on the list of World Monument Fund, a lot of partners came together, including the support of the Hungarian government and a synagogue, the Subotica synagogue was uh, was um, uh, restored and rehabilitated. Helas, uh, you know, the, that building has been rehabilitated, but we have very alarming uh, messages from, uh, from the city of Subotica that many other places in the historic city of Subotica are disappearing because of unsuitable uh, urban development. Um, uh, I just mentioned the 8th of April, we are organizing a webinar at 10 o'clock, so all of you who want to attend are welcome to attend the announcement of the seven most endangered sites for 2021. You see here a wider uh, list of 12, uh, 12 sites uh, um, that uh, have been shortlisted, and since again, we, uh, Croatia is organizing this conference, I want to point out that the cemetery of Mirogoi 
has been uh, nominated by uh, the Croatian government and that has suffered twice uh, because of the earthquake. And it is on the short list uh, of, uh, we will we'll see on the, 8th of, uh, on the 8th of April, which of the 12 have been selected to be on the final um, uh, finalist. There it is, the cemetery complex of Mirogov, an extraordinary uh, historical, uh, multi-confessional, um, uh, neoclassical uh, cemetery, which is um, one member uh, member of the Association of Extraordinary Cemeteries uh, in, in in Europe. Um, another uh, another site uh, which is which is on the short list is the World Heritage Site endangered at Dachany Monastery in Kosovo, uh, endangered because of unresolved political, legal, institutional issues between in in, in um, uh, between Serbia. Uh, Kosovo, and, and this is something again that we believe that the civil society organization can help to depoliticize the, uh, the, the, um, um, uh, the situation and, and use heritage rather as a bridge and not as, as a division between the various communities living in various uh, parts. Um, so let me just uh, now, I, 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 my time is uh, up. I just want, when I, uh, when I mentioned to you that, um, so all these examples are giving you examples of various types of threats and there are enormous amounts of threats coming, but the climate change is of course collectively a threat to our planet uh, in many ways and also to our cultural heritage. And this is the reason why we believe that we have to be part also of the climate action. And, and since today is the 9 of, 19 of March, uh, Friday, Friday for Future, an important uh, climate strike uh, is happening uh, um, today on the 19th of March. It's also, uh, I just wanted to point out that in three days time on the 22nd of March at three o'clock, uh, whoever is interested is invited to the launch event of our European Cultural Heritage Green Paper. Um, uh, we have uh, produced that together with ICOMOS and with the help of European Investment Bank Institute. And what we want to basically uh, to achieve with that uh, green paper, we want to demonstrate that uh, whatever uh, action is done at European level, at national level, regional, local level uh, for the green transformation uh, as part of the so-called European Green Deal has to take cultural heritage into consideration as something which is part of the solution. Of course, uh, um, uh, climate change is threatening cultural heritage, but cultural heritage can also be part of the solution and all the adaptation strategies and all the policies for climate action that is taking. So I really invite you to uh, sort of um, either attend the launch event or look into that document that we will present. And the European Commissioner, Maria Gabriel, will be with us, members of the European Parliament. So it's really a moment where we have to show, um, uh, again, the power of networking and solidarity uh, of cultural heritage for the green transformation and, and, and the success of the European uh, green, uh, green Deal. And uh, the last but not least, of course, uh, we are talking about this huge uh, uh, threat posed by climate change, but we have the imminent now threat of the pandemic. Uh, I just want to point out that we have produced um, uh, a document, uh, COVID-19 and beyond, where we just uh, collected uh, um, the input from various uh, members of our network, how they are reacting, uh, what is the impact of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the pandemic, uh, the social implication, the cultural implication, the financial implications, uh, uh, implications on the personnel and the security of jobs, but also the security of heritage sites, contents and visitors. So um, whoever is interested to sort of, uh, um, I, I will really invite you to, to have a look uh, in, in that document. And uh, to end, uh, I just want to end with a note of hope. However big crisis we have, um, we also, with all that formidable expert expertise, enthusiasm, engagement that we have in the cultural field at all levels, from international, European, national, regional, local, um, we can 
advocate the need to have what we call a real heritage deal for Europe. And this is the sort of the title of a publication, Togetherness, uh, the heritage deal for Europe that we, our executive president published recently. I also want to invite you to read uh, this essay, basically that it shows why we believe that with a holistic approach to cultural heritage, we can contribute to the famous build back better. We are all talking about the recovery and we have to build back better uh, on the basis of sustainability, on the basis of green transformation. And we believe that investment in heritage-led transformation of our society, economy and environment, we can uh, indeed build back better. So thank you so much for listening to me. And of course, we look very much forward to many more exchanges and, and collaboration.